Hey Internet, it's RJ. Welcome back. Thanks for tuning into the show today. Now today is Sunday, so you know what that means. It's time to go around the net with all the news you can use in the week that was in credit and finance. So on the docket for today, we have a really old throwback to the Equifax 2017 data breach with some new information coming about that. We have SoFi checking in, becoming a real bank. So very interesting Amex offers again, and Chase is actually getting stingy with a new credit that no one's freaking out nearly enough about, so allow me to do so in their place. So if any of that sounds interesting to you, then go ahead, press the subscribe button and let's get to work. Now, batting lead off here, we have to go all the way back to 2017 for this Equifax data breach. So, you know, just to refresh your memory again, Equifax back in 2017 had a data breach. It affected like 150 million Americans, give or take. If you're watching this, there's a good chance you were affected. I was. Um, so what they did was they, you know, they had a class action lawsuit where they had two options where you could either get like a cash settlement, like 125 bucks or something, or you could get free credit monitoring for, I think, up to four years. Well, the cash settlement quickly ran out, you know, it moved down from $125 to whatever the final number ended up being. So they went back and they tried to encourage folks to take, you know, the free credit monitoring. I think they even went so far to say if you're taking the cash option, you have to prove that you already had credit monitoring in place. So why is all this important? Well, they're actually sending out now, them being Equifax, sending out, you know, emails now how to activate and set up your credit monitoring. I know it's been quite some time, so let's take a look at the email that I personally got so you can be up to speed to protect yourself. So here we have it. This is the full email. Again, I'm not going to go through the full thing, but you know the top part here, you can see you found a claim in the Equifax data breach settlement and chose to receive free three barrels, so Equifax Experian and Transfusion Credit Monitoring provided by Experian for four years. So the implementation was delayed um, through the settlement because of appeals. Now it's actually you know affirmed and they can go ahead and do it. So the key takeaways here, are, again, this is going to be provided by Experian Identity Works for four years. Um, you must enroll by June 27th of 2022. Now, if you drop down to how to enroll, um, they give you a specific link for Identity Works. I, it's probably not a unique link, but I blacked it out just in case. There is going to be an activation code that probably will be unique to you. Again, um, June 27th is the date there to get that started by, and then four years from the date that you roll, enroll in. Now, if you go down to what, what is included in Identity Works, you get all the standard stuff here. So there you have it. Now, overall, again, a lot of us do have some form of credit monitoring through the credit card issuers we have, Chase, and Amex City, but those usually partner with one of the bureaus, one or two of the bureaus that they use for their hard pull, so it doesn't necessarily mean you're covered through all three. So again, if you enrolled in the settlement, you know, to get this, you might as well activate it for four years. I mean, it's definitely, you know, good to have the extra coverage. And again, why not? They actually owe us this much. So, you know, in case that ended up in a uh, spam folder, you know, you can check that out for sure. But moving on to some more fun stories, and we are checking in with Capital One. So this is about the Capital One Venture X. Now, Venture X is a really popular card. It actually won the channel's card of the year for 2021 award. Um, but part of the sign-up bonus is in addition to those 10,000, those 100,000 points that you get for spending $10,000 in six months, there's also this $200 um, credit. It's not quite a travel credit. It's more meant for like rental services like Airbnbs. Um, but, you know, some folks don't like rentals like that. And so we want to use the credit in our own particular way as we're known to do. Well, and we now have some data points around how this $200 credit can get triggered. Um, so let's take a look at these. So what triggers the $200 vacation rental credit? Um, a lot of things actually. Paying for a hotel stay directly, resort fees when using the card to pay at the hotel, charging meals to your hotel room, rent payments through several services like Rent Cafe, Yardy, or RealPage, rent payments when using PayPal Key, and then HOA fees through ClickPay, PayLease, and CIT Pay. So again, these are just public data points. Kind of your mileage may vary, but overall, that's actually a wide range of things that cover this $200 credit. I mean, again, when you have HOA fees on the list or you have, you know, paying like directly at the hotel, um, they should, probably should just rename as a $200 travel credit. Again, it's just part of the sign-up bonus. You know, right now it's not you know going to stay in the card in year number two and beyond, at least right now. So you know, I I think this is a big deal overall because it helps you. It, it makes that ten thousand dollars and spend even more. So you're getting a hundred thousand points, one cent per point. You're talking about a thousand dollars. Add this two hundred dollars. You're talking about twelve hundred dollars in your first year, plus all the other things you get for the card. Um, makes this a even even better of a card, even better of a sign-up bonus. Now that we know about this flexibility. 
I would just say if this is you, jump on it rather quickly because sometimes issuers can close up these loopholes rather quickly when we try to use credits um, in ways that they didn't necessarily intend for them to be used, which is kind of a theme of this channel, especially when you talk about Amex and things like that. So that's Capital One. Now we move on to the banking world, specifically focusing on SoFi. So SoFi is big. They have, you know, they bought the naming rights to a stadium. They're always in the news. They have a lot of little banking bonuses here and there. Um, they have a credit card. Well, they're more of like a neo bank, which really means you know they are kind of a tech company that handles finance stuff, but they always partner with a bank to do the actual banking chart or regulatory back end stuff. Well, that is no more. SoFi is officially coming of age, and they are becoming an actual bank. So let's take a look at this. So here we have it. SoFi received regulatory approval to be a nationwide bank. So SoFi Money will offer a 1% APY. To do this, you must upgrade to a checking savings account from like the money management, whatever account they call it now, um, and then have a direct deposit from an employer or something like that hit the account to qualify for that 1%. And this is interesting again because SoFi often has a lot of little easy bonus offers for you bonus hunters out there. Now, you know, again, 1%, not a ton to write home about, but given the current interest rate environment, you know, I know we're expected to have multiple rate increases. Um, but right now, given the, the rates, 1% is not terrible. Um, I have SoFi myself. I don't really use them for much, but again, they do offer random bonuses. Like if you check your, check your rate for a personal loan or a refinance, something like that without even a hard credit pool they'll usually throw you 20 bucks a few times a year and mail you home a gift card so they're definitely like a bank account bonus to worth keep having so I think I have a link to them down below. Um, I'll link to it if you're interested in this. Now, overall, this is more interesting to me because you know we see the Neo Bank kind of make the jump to full, to full legitimate bank, which we haven't really seen too often. So I do wonder if this means we're going to see even more competitive financial products from them. Again, they're kind of more analogous to an ally that is fully based online but they do have a 2% card. So anytime we see something like this, now that they're nationwide, does it make more sense to come out with a few more cards, a few more competitive products? That's kind of what I'm hoping for. And we'll kind of see if this becomes a trend with a lot of the other Neo banks out there because there are quite a few. So with that, we now have to check in with American Express. Then we'll close with House of Diamond and Chase. So if you remember a few weeks ago, give or take, American Express had these really weird Amex offers that they were launching that seemed too good to be true. And it looks like they're back again. So if you take a look at this, we have two that are floating around. Spend $1,000 and get $1,000 back. That can be done three times. And spend $3,000 and get $5,500 back. It can be done three times as well. So you can see a picture of the actual offer there and see it's good through add, add it by December 31st of this year. Now, originally when these came out, we thought these were like a typo. We still believe it was a typo somewhere, but Amex actually honored them. And there were a few people here who actually found these offers in their accounts. Now, I actually went ahead and looked. Of course, I didn't have any, which is not super surprising because I never use my Amex cards. But, you know, a lot of you, a few of you did. So it could definitely be worth taking the two seconds to check this, you know, and see if you're targeted because these are really, really good offers. And again, they are honoring them as at least they were last time. So that's why I included it in here. Um, so with that, we're going to move to our last story of the day. And this is the House of Diamond. Now, if you remember two years ago when the Sapphire Reserve got its refresh, we hiked the annual fee to $550. They also added a $60 DoorDash credit plus um, Dash Pass membership, but those were only for two years. And then as about a week or so ago, actually we reported, hey, you should probably cancel your DoorDash membership because it's going to come due and they might charge you for it. And then turns out Chase and DoorDash are now extending their partnership with a new credit and Dash Pass again. So let's take a look at this. So here we have it, Chase plus DoorDash. Again, Dash Pass is going to be extended until 2024. So that's the Sapphire Reserve preferred. And the regular Sapphire card, there is a no annual fee Sapphire card that's pretty worthless, but they count that one in there as well. Now, specific to the Sapphire Reserve, we're also going to get a $5 monthly credit, and that's going to start April of this year and go through December of 2024. Now, the credit does expire after three months, so that technically that does mean you can kind of roll them over, and you could almost have $15 a quarter to use, give take now overall you know this isn't that bad but this is one of those things that in my opinion if american express did this added a five dollar credit we would absolutely positively destroy them for it and no one's really like freaking out about it it's not that big of a deal it's just like you know we would have crushed amex if they did this 
Now, what's likely to have happened is, again, they were giving you $60 a year for two years, and what they probably realized is that people like me would wait until the end of December, and realize, oh, I have $60 to use, and you would look up on your phone the closest place that you can do pickup, find the pizza place a mile away, and buy $60 of pizza in one go, and then be done with the credit, and that's not ideally how they intended it to be used, right? You know, their marketing budget is like, hey, we'll give you $60 plus Dash Pass, that's the cost of customer acquisition. But the problem with that is, you know, the way Uber does it with Amex, they give you like the $10 or $15 a month, and that guarantees if someone's going to use it at least 12 touch points minimum with that customer. It's 12 touch points to build a habit to get them to using the service that you can send them notifications, all that thing. With, with DoorDash, it's clearly just one and done for a lot of us, especially in this kind of group here, a lot of us. So I think they learned their lesson for that. That's why you're seeing, because again, $5.60 divided by 12, you're going to get $5 a month. So it's still the same amount, um, but it is the $5 number just seems so, so stingy in my opinion, even though, yes, it does come out to the same amount. Now, if you already canceled your DoorDash Dash Pass like I did, trying to avoid a charge, I do not know if you can re-enroll the same card. I imagine you could. I'll have to try it and see what happens. Um, but you know, if you have have that done that, then let us know down below. And of course, let me know what you think about this DoorDash credit. I mean, I guess it's a saving grace that you can pool it and get fifteen dollars. That is something. But again, I just think there's a little bit of a double standard here that if American Express did this, we would vilify them for it and chase. No one's really overreacting. Maybe because it's five dollars. But again. You know, $5 is barely enough to take care of like the, the, the processing charges the DoorDash is going to take and then the inflation of the food. So, I mean, I don't know. At this point, it's kind of a throwaway credit. I guess maybe I'm not super mad about it because it's it's not really worth it, right? At that point, you know, $5 is enough to cover the extra cost. I could have just called the pizza place and just gone directly there and not gone through the hassle. Anyways, but I think I'm talking way too much about this $5 credit. It just was very interesting to me. But anyways, guys, if you like this one, drop me a thumbs up down below. If you found it particularly interesting, consider subscribing to the channel again posting content just like this every monday wednesday and friday of course right back here every sunday with all the news you can use in the week that was in credit and finance of course my question for you let me know what you think about that doordash credit in the house of diamond are they getting cheap am i just overreacting what is it are we giving the amex a pass it was well as well as any other stories that you may have seen and want to talk about down below love to get your thoughts on that but anyways guys that's gonna do it for this one as always thank you so much for watching and i'll talk to you on monday